Hey guys! So today I'm going to be doing the I Dare You book tag. And I wasn't tagged by anyone, but I really wanted to do this tag, so I figured why not just do it. This tag was created by Ariana Reads, and I will leave her information and a link to her video down below. Her questions were different than the questions that I've seen a lot of people doing, but I'm going to go with the questions that everyone's been doing recently, so they might be a little different than her original video. But yeah, so let's get started. So the first question is, what book has been on your shelf the longest? And this is kind of like a difficult question for me because I have half of my book collection at my parents' house and then half of it here with me in my apartment. So it's kind of split and I'm not really sure what I have at home. So I figured just to go with the longest book that I have in my collection here with me in my apartment and that is Self Help by Lori Moore. I've had this book my first year of college. It was my first writing class and I did like a short story writing class and it's definitely the first stories that I've written in second person and that's what really drew, drew me to this book. I really enjoy it and I would recommend it to anyone looking to read more short fiction. And the second question is what is your current read, your last read, and the book you'll read next? And currently I'm reading Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. I just started this book today and I'm already over 100 pages through and I really like it so far so I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm really interested in all like the court politics and all that sort of thing and just the world and the three characters. Like I don't have one that I'm particularly in favor of so I'll be interested to see if I like have a favorite sister out of the three, but we'll see. It's so far, it's really good. And my last read, I didn't technically finish. It's actually the first book I've DNF'd this year, which I will talk more about later in more detail in my wrap up for this month. And that is The Animators by Kayla Ray Whitaker. And um, I just, this book, I wasn't really what I was expecting. I started reading this book with a completely different idea what it was going to be about and then it kind of switched gears on me and I just I just got into this really bad reading slump and I could just not get through this book. I might pick it up later but right now it's not in my interest. And the next book I'll read, this is really hard because I don't like to plan ahead what I'm going to read. It just seems like then homework or something. I don't know. I always kind of like to just be spontaneous and after I'm finished with a book see what I'm in the mood for. I guess I can tell you a book that's on my radar that I really want to get to soon and that is Station Eleven. This is one of the books that I have on my 17 books to get to in 2017 and I just feel like it's about time to finally get to that book. Plus I don't think I've actually crossed off any books on that list yet so and we're already in the fourth month of the year, so I kind of need to get started on that list. So it'll probably be a book on that list, if not Station Eleven. And the third question is, what book did everybody love but you hated? And for this one, I have to go with Uprooted by Naomi Novak. I fell in love with the UK edition, the cover of the UK edition. It's just beautiful with like the teal purple and gold colors. I absolutely love the cover. The premise sounded pretty interesting too and I was like yes this book is gonna be for me. I started reading it. That's actually like one of the other books that I DNF. I don't typically DNF a lot of books but this one I just could not get through and I just didn't like it. I know I probably should give it a second chance and try to read it all the way through because I'm a firm believer that you can't really judge a book until you finish it. I know just a lot of people have loved that book and it just was not something I was interested in. The fourth question is, what book you keep telling yourself you'll read but you probably won't? And this is Throne of Glass by Sherry J Maas. This book is just all over booktube all the time. It's a YA book. I honestly don't even know what it's about. But every time I hear people talking about it, I'm like, oh, I should definitely check that book out. I think I might enjoy it, but I never get to it. And there's just a lot of like issues that I've heard about the book that in the later books, and I just don't think I will ever get to this book. It just does not seem like something as I grow older and older that I would enjoy reading, number one. I feel like there are so many other options I have available to me that I feel like I will just never read this book 
because it interests me a little bit, but it's more, I'm more curious about what the hype is rather than the story itself. So, oh, I don't think I will ever read Throne of Glass. The fifth question is, what book are you saving for retirement? I'm not entirely sure what this question means. I guess it's a book that you're saving when you have more time, free time. So I would have to go with A Little Life by Hayana Naragira. And this book is just huge. Like I feel like it'd be the perfect thing to read when I retire. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I really want to read it eventually. So it's just a very long book and I feel like it's gonna take me forever to get through. And another book that I probably would say for this would be War and Peace if I was not currently reading it. But War and Peace is definitely a book I feel like I would want to go back to after I retire just because it's it's been rough getting through these past couple of months. <laughs> the sixth question is, last page, read it first or wait till the end? Um, of course wait till the end. I never understood why people read the last page. I feel like it spoils a lot for you. If there's no real context, you don't really know what's going on. So I just, I don't know. Like I'm tempted sometimes when I'm flipping through the end of the page, if there's like a glossary to like check out the last page, but I rarely actually read it. And the seventh question is acknowledgement, waste of pink paper, ink, or an interesting aside. And I think this kind of depends on the author. Um, if I'm really interested by an author, I love to read the acknowledgements. If I'm intrigued by the story, I like to read who was the editor, who was the agent, who helped them. So it depends. I feel like I think they should be there for people that are interested in learning more about the book, but I don't think they're a waste of paper in any way, though I don't always read them. And the eighth question is, what book character would you switch places with? I would have to go with Miffany Thomas from the book Rook by Daniel O'Malley. Number one, I absolutely love this book, so being any character in this book would probably be interesting, but I love the idea of like losing my memories. I know that sounds so weird, but like being in a world where like magical kind of things, magical things happen, and being like a leader of the secret society or a secret group of agents seems really interesting. So yeah, I'd love to switch places with her, even though she was kind of in a lot of dangerous situations and she lost her memory, but it just seems like a really cool, she seems like a really cool character. And I love the whole setting of that book. So I just feel like I would fit in really great. And the ninth question is, do you have a book that reminds you of a specific time in your life? And I'd have to say Lord of the Rings. My mother used to read them to me and my sister when we were really young, before the movies came out and she kind of just wanted us to have a background on the books because they were her favorite books as a child and that's just i just remember being in her room at night just reading these books and falling asleep to the stories and that was just a nice it just makes me feel comfortable thinking of lord of the rings and that the book so i always get a sense of comfort and family when i when i watch the lord of the rings or read the book so yeah that's like the book that just gives me all the good feels, I guess. And it's really the, the series that really pushed me into reading more and loving fantasy. So I just have to go Thor of the Rings for that one. So I just have to go to, so I just have to go to, I just have to go Thor of the Rings for that one. Number 10, name a book that you acquired in an interesting way. And I honestly can't think of any books that I acquired differently. Number 11 is, have you ever given a book away for a special reason or to a special person? And I'm not sure if this means like, did I, I gave a book that I own to a person? If that's the case, I don't tend to give books that I own away. I usually buy a person another copy of the book. Um, but yeah, I can't really remember a book that I've given. I don't know, I've, I always let my mother read books that I find that stick with me and so we can talk about them. So I guess I always give books to her or let her borrow books and if she likes them, I'll buy her a copy. Um, so yeah, I'd have to say my mom, I guess, and any book that I enjoy, so yeah. And number 12 is which book has been with you the most places? And that for this one, I'd have to say Lab Girl by Hope Jaren. And I wasn't a big fan of this book, and I think that's why I had it with me a lot. But this book went to me when I went to Costa Rica for a business trip, and 
I read it on the beach, I read it by the pool, I, I mean it just was with me the entire time even though I didn't finish it during this trip and I didn't really enjoy it after I did finish it. But yeah, that book was definitely with me on a lot of adventures in Costa Rica this year, so yeah. And the 12th question is, any required reading that you hated in school but now two, year, or, but two years later you enjoyed? And I don't really have any books that I really disliked in high school that I now enjoy, so I don't really have an answer to this question. And number 14 is used or new. I could go both ways with this. If it's a book that I absolutely love, I would want to buy it new just so I can wear it down myself because I know I'm going to. But if it's a new book that I'm trying out that I'm not too sure about, I don't mind buying it used because I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it or not. I do tend to buy books though because I like the cover, so either way I'm going to have to, I want to enjoy the aesthetic of the cover, so I don't really care if it's used or if it's used or new, I do prefer my used books to be gently used, so yeah. <laughs> and number 15 is, have you read a Dan Brown book? And yes, I have. I've read Angels and Demons, and I, I do like that book. I think it's interesting. I picked it up after watching The Da Vinci Code and kind of enjoying that, and then I read Angels and Demons. His writing is just very dense, and I like the mystery, though, aspect to it. But those kind of conspiracy books just put me in like this whirlwind of like emotions and like thoughts and then I get into this crazy mood. So I tend not to go towards those books, so I do enjoy them. Number 16 is, have you ever seen a movie that you liked better than the book? And every time I get this question, I have to say Cloud Atlas. Um, the movie is a lot better to me, in my opinion, than the book by David Mitchell. But David Mitchell is one of my favorite authors, so that's not... I mean, it's uh, to me, Cloud Atlas is probably one of his least best books in the fact that I just did not really like the ending or the way it kind of came together at the end. But I think the movie does a lot better, more successful job of kind of the plot just follows a more logical thing to me. I don't know. I did see the movie first, so I might be just biased in that aspect because I saw the characters. I liked all the characters and I just liked the whole movie. The It was just a great movie. Number 17, have you ever read a book that made you hungry, cookbooks included? Um, I would have to go with Mon by Kim Thoy. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the name or the title or the author correctly, but um, it's an amazing book. It talks about a Vietnamese woman that moves to Canada and she loves to cook and Oh, the food just sounds amazing in that book, so I'd have to go with that one for sure. So number 18 is, who is the person whose book advice you will always take? And that would have to be my mother. Um, we, we have very similar bookish tastes most of the time, so I would always trust her and always read a book that she suggests just because I know I'm going to find some merit in it. And it always it is always nice having someone close to me that I can talk about books with. So anything she recommends, I usually pick up. Though often, though more often than not, I'm the one recommending her books, but hey. And number 19, the last question, is there a book out of your comfort zone that you ended up enjoying? And for this I have to say Dreamland by Sarah Dessen. Um, I'm not a big huge fan of contemporary novels, but I really enjoy all of Sarah Dessen's novels, but in particular I loved Sarah um I love Dreamland. It's just a very touching and emotional story. And I think I read it at a time in my life that I really needed it um as a young teenager, so I, I just felt like it was a really great book, very emotional and very just believable, very true to me. So yeah, I don't typically read a lot of contemporary, but Sarah Dexon is one of the ones that I always flock to when I do. Those are the questions in the idea you book tag. I know I'm supposed to tag a few people, but I'm not really sure who hasn't done this tag yet. It's been pretty popular recently, so if you have not done this tag and you're interested in doing it, I tag you. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and me answering all these bookish questions. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.